Hello, everybody. Shaquita Graham here with the lovely Noma Langa, Michelle Lee Moses, and together we are MarriedWomensBiz.com or Married Women's Business. And we have been talking about relationships. We love to talk about marriage, building a black family. So, of course, we came across a great clip um, from Sharzad Ali. Many know, many don't know. So, I just want to uh, share my screen and kind of see what she had to say about building a black family. Um, that okay with you, Noma? Yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> okay, let's get started here. All right. right. Thing is to tear our man down, tear our nation down instead of building it up. Wait, let me go we back. See, we have a lot of power. We are very strong women. I'm saying we're using our strength in the wrong direction. We're using it to tear our man down, tear our nation down instead of building it up. Having an education and a job is not does not necessarily mean you have a successful life. I keep telling black women that to uh, raise a child, they say, well, I uh, provided with food, clothing, and shelter. That's not raising a child. That's maintaining one. To raise a child, you need a parental coalition of a man and a woman. We have sons who are by not having a father in the home. They don't know how to respect women. They take on the uh, black feminine, female emotionalism, emotionalism. They become bitchy. They're doubtful. They're indecisive. They can't make a decision. They don't know what to do about being a man, but we can't teach them that. We don't have that knowledge. We have daughters who grew up in a home where they don't see any affection, where there's no man there. They go out into the world and try to mate. They don't have no idea how to be no woman to no man, how to make function in a house with a man, because they haven't seen it. Most of our children are just like us, get all the information you have about how you be with a mate off television. It's the only media that shows us anybody being together. Those rules have not worked for us. The white woman's liberation movement, we don't have anything to do with that. We have not been under the control of the black man for over 500 years, so what do we have to get liberated from him from? They haven't been our boss. That's the white woman and her man. They're going through that, and that's their business. We don't have any business being in that. Well... She said a lot, didn't she, Noma? <laughs> she sure did. Um, I'm going to start with my favorite topic, which is feminism. <laughs> <laughs> that. I'm sure the trolls will love that. <laughs> oh. um, you know, she, she said a very important thing, which I say constantly, that feminism is just not for us. Because a large part of feminism was about white males who had privilege and had power and influence and they were misusing it and then their women felt like they were being oppressed by that so they started the feminism movement and <clears throat> it just does not make sense to me for a black woman to put herself in that same position when she's living here in the united states of america where actually we know we've seen the statistics we see it on the news everything around us is telling us that the black man is not um, he's not the most powerful person. He doesn't have the most influence. He doesn't have the most wealth. Um, he doesn't have all those things that a privileged white male does have. So to treat him as a black woman, the way that a white woman treats a white man, to me, it's, it's, it's madness. It really is. Okay. So let me just back up a little bit. Now you've been married for, I think, 12 years, right? Yes, ma'am. And you have three Four, three beautiful I children. Three kids and one stepdaughter. So that's a total of four kids that I have. Okay. And I've been married 14 years and I have two beautiful children of my own. And I do have some stepchildren as well that are adults. So the thing is that I, I've realized from doing these segments, you know, everybody doesn't want the same thing. Like I personally want it as a young woman after I got through my, my phase of my late teens, early 20s of not thinking I could have a monogamous relationship, not thinking relationships could work, to wanting to be married, have a family, have a successful, um, you know, monogamous marriage. You know, I wanted those things. I wanted to be a businesswoman, a career woman. I mean, I wanted to love my husband and him love me and those types of things. So everybody does not want that. But if you do want that, <clears throat> then our commentary is, is related to that. And I think what Sharzad Ali is related to that. So I think that think focusing on number one, do we have a, a situation where there are problems? Yes, we should analyze those problems and we should come up with solutions. So um, I think some of the things that she said were, that were very important is that we don't realize the importance of a parental coalition. 
And therefore, we're raising young women and young men who don't have knowledge of what it means to be um, a, a wife material, husband material, build a family. I mean, or even want to build a family. They have, they're getting all of their information from TV because as she mentioned, as black women, we have a lot of power, just regardless of having money or education or anything. We feed the black family. We birth the black family. We nurture the black family. So if we feed them, you know, house, Hollywood, housewife, hip hop, ATL, whatever it is, then that's where they're getting their brain formation and thoughts from. If we feed them McDonald's and all of that, then that's where they're getting their health from. So we have um, power on, in a very real and practical sense. And so does the black man, because again, we can't take the Eurocentric mindset that everything is related to materialism. Yes, materials are important, but what is innate about who we are also says a lot and, and has a lot of power just wrapped up in that alone. Right. Um, you know, I wanted, I, I honestly, most of the time you and I agree on everything, but the one thing I don't agree in this particular instance mm -hmm. is even if a person says they don't want a family and they don't want to have a marriage or whatever, mm -hmm. um, think about what you're subjecting your kids to when you just have them and then, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Uh, that is not fair because the one thing that she pointed out is she said that, you know, you can't expect, um, young men and young women to grow into whole adults because the guy who grows up with just mom and dad's not there, he's going to grow up. His only example of a woman is his mom. So guess what? He's going to expect his wife to be his mom, you know, to take care of his needs because that's the only role model he has in terms of a woman or what a woman should be. The same applies to um, a young man who grows up without a, a positive, strong role model, male in the household. How's he going to lead? He doesn't know how to do that. He doesn't really have a, a, a blueprint of how that happens. And if he's picking up those lessons, again, you say from media, from uh, street life or whatever it is, that's a disaster. Because then it means that if he puts himself in the position where a woman is supposed to be subject to him, she's being subjected to bad leadership. And there's nothing worse than being subjected to or submitted to bad leadership. It's oppressive. So even if we say, yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm independent or whatever it is, and I don't want a man or I don't need a man or whatever, but then I'm giving birth to children who have to grow up with me as their main role model. And the main thing I'm telling them is that there's, a man has no worth, right? I'm raising my son. I'm saying I don't need a man. I don't want a man. He's not necessary, but I'm raising a son. What am I, what's the message that I'm giving him? What, what is he going to grow up thinking about himself and what he should do and who he should be and how he should lead? That's very, very, very hard for him to do with just me as a role model and giving him those messages about what it means to be a man or what a man is or what his role in society is, what his role in family is. Um, am I going to be the kind of woman that shows my son um, respect or how to be respected or what it means to be a man in society. No, even if I try my hardest, I'm not going to do as good a job because he needs a male role model because he is a male. Just in the same way, uh, everybody who knows me, knows me well, knows that I am a daddy's girl through and through. But I had my mother there to show me what it means to be a woman and not just any woman, a good mother and a good wife. So we need those. Absolutely. And I don't think we disagree on that. Um, I think we, we definitely agree on uh, the importance, if you're trying to build a black nation, the importance of what she said, a two parent coalition, um, both parents being engaged in preparing the next generation, anywhere from, you know, homeschooling, which we both do, right. um, entrepreneurship, teaching our children that, which we both do, preparing them to um, get out here and, and create a living that's not dependent on um, the white supremacist system to um, as, as much as possible. So I think we agree there. I think one of the issues though, where we might see a difference in our, um, in the way we deliver is the fact that I recognize that, you know, there's a saying that um, like 10% of the people have vision and the other 90% work for those people. And I'm not trying to just say that I'm in some 10% or I'm some elite or whatever, but I'm just saying that everybody has different philosophies of what 
um, they need to do to get what they want. When I was younger, I thought that, um, you know, I just didn't think as deeply as I do now about my decisions and what it is that I want out of life. So I'm just really trying to kind of open that up to say that some people are just not there yet, you know, yeah, or they may never get there or they have another way that they want to do it. I might not agree with with it because I think in a post that I put up recently I was like the only thing you have to do to be cool with me is believe in the upliftment of the black family and believe that right um, white supremacy must be replaced now outside of that if you want to believe in whatever <laughs> you know what I'm saying polygamy what I mean that's you <laughs> right you know what I mean? I, now I personally don't think I personally don't think that is so I couldn't do it and I don't I don't advocate that as the way to build because that's not how I built what I have mm -hmm. so if you are interested in the types of things that I'm interested in building high income career um, your own business monogamous marriage all of those things then it's in great kids right and right all a lot i mean more than i could say in this video but uh, along those lines then you would resonate with what i'm saying which right. is we need to take control of the narrative that our children see we don't need to be subjecting them to the tv the school system or any um of the institute institutions that are really still um, inundated with racism, white supremacy for them to get their idea of who they should be and how they should be. Right. And we should be creating two parent coalitions. Now, yeah, you might not be in a, um, a marriage right now for whatever reason, but if you're working towards that, or if you have a way to offset you know that male influence but you definitely as a woman shouldn't be used against the male which is what miss ali was talking about being used against our black man and not valuing his contribution i think is um a major problem right and i actually remember i'm not sure if it was um in the part of the clip that we played i don't think it was where she talks about um how a black organization actually built yeah. Um, a, a housing complex for um, for so the so-called black community, but the only people allowed in that complex are black women and black kids, and black men are not allowed. I mean, how louder can that scream destruction of the black family? What does that even mean? What it means is that a woman then is in a position where she has to pick between her basic needs, which is housing, you know, and, uh, you know, a roof over your head and so forth. Um, she has to pick between that and the, the survival of her, her gener the generations that come after her. Because mm -hmm. even if we don't put it in those terms, that's what it is. When you decide that men don't belong in our homes and you be decide that don't, they don't belong in a normal society, you're destroying not just your own kids, but their kids and their kids and their kids, and it echoes into eternity. I know that I keep saying that, but it's the truth. And you can see it when you hear people crying and saying that they're suffering, and you dig into their suffering. What exactly are you suffering from? Well, I don't have enough money. Okay, why don't you have enough money? Well, you know, I got to get the kids here and I got to do this. And this woman, poor woman, is doing, I'm not judging her. I'm actually sympathizing with her situation she's trying her best okay but she's doing a job as one person that two three four people should be doing because we're supposed to be building not just man and woman we're supposed to also have extended family that supports encourages and lifts up those two people that are in that marriage especially when it's just beginning she's doing all these things and she's saying ah, i'm not getting enough and i'm trying my hardest she's exhausted so she has no joy in her life she has she doesn't have enough money she doesn't spend enough time with her kids, so you can bet their behavior is going to get worse and worse and worse. And it's not really necessarily all her fault, but even with her doing her best, she's just not making it. And yeah. I don't want us to keep trying to say that that's normal and that's okay. And then if you do say it's not normal, it's not okay, and people get angry because they're in that situation, fine. Nobody's judging you specifically because yes you're doing your best but let's all get on the same page about the fact that going forward this is not what we want to do we want the best for ourselves we want the best for the men we want the best for the kids and we want the best for future generations so if we're suffering now let's do something different that's all
Yeah, I mean, and I love that. I mean, going back to what you said about this um, so-called Black organization, us um, creating this housing complex where it's just men, I mean, just uh, women and children and no men. I think the root of the problem there is the so-called Black organizations or any organization that we allow to come into our community and pretend that they have solutions for us instead of us as the black woman and the black man coming together and developing our own solutions in the form of institutions, in the form of um, new methods and new ways of doing things instead of borrowing from Eurocentric ideas. I feel like that is the root of the problem. Right. Because again, what she talked about this feminist movement, why would you get with people, especially at that time, were very oppressive towards you and follow a movement that they came up with. Like, why did you feel like that solutions would be there. You're looking in the wrong direction. We need to look inward towards ourselves. And that's what we promote on our platforms, Mary Women's Business, um, MaryWomensBusiness.com. The whole idea is that the black woman and the black man will um, circle our wagons, if you will. And we will come up with um, innovative and inventive ways of doing things uh, primarily, hopefully, ba based on our ancient history and on the wisdom that we can get from our ancestors and not from a system that has oppressed us for hundreds of years. And I think that's where we need to begin when we talk about rebuilding the Black family. And it's not about pointing the finger at Black mothers or pointing the finger at Black men or Black fathers. It's about us saying, listen, Houston, we have a problem, mm -hmm. and this is how we are going to solve it. Because at some point, many of us, because it's not going to be all of us, and I don't think we need all of us, but a great deal of us are going to have to say, listen, we are going to overcome our problems. We are going to have victory over this negative situation. And we're going to get serious and focused about working on the solutions. And I think that's all that, you know, she was trying to say. And that's all that we're often trying to say. Right. Um, you know, the, the, this is the last thing I'll say. Um, sure. The best advice that I ever got from my father, um, mm -hmm. you know, my mother and my father have been married now since for about 43 years, and I think they've been together for 46 or 47. Mm -hmm. um, so a long time, you know, especially by today's standards. And I've never forgotten one of the key things that my dad said in relation to family and marriage. And I've held on to that. Um, he said, you know what, if you as a unit, as a family, a man and a wife in your marriage, if you need help, help is good. Help that comes from the outside. If there's something wrong with your kid and you think they need a psychologist or a tutor or whatever it is that you're getting, he said, all that is very well. If your finances are not right and you need to hire a financial counselor, if the marriage is going through a phase and you need a, a guidance from outside, whether it's a marriage counselor or a relative, pastor, whatever it is, he said, here's the most important thing. He said, the most important thing is, first of all, the two of you, just you, man and woman, need to come together and agree on what's best for your family. And once you agree that you're doing what's best for your family, then you can invite other people in to help you. See, so that's the problem with these, uh, uh, what, what was it called, a development or a housing complex or whatever it is. It's solving a problem and leaving out the most important thing. It starts with one man and one woman deciding that they're going to be together and they're going to build together. So next thing, now you have the man not allowed in and his kids with mothers and there's no fathers. I mean, to me, that's just, it's outrageous to me. It really is. It's outrageous. Because here's the thing. Then we're perpetuating something that we say we don't want. You can find a lot of women who say they're okay by themselves, but let them get started talking about their situation and their circumstances and what's wrong. They will start talking about it. These men, they ain't no good. They did this. They did that. And the truth is, we don't get anywhere by people pointing fingers at each other, whether it's a black woman pointing the finger at the black man or the black man pointing the finger at the black woman. We just have to recognize that the enemy is the destruction of our family. Anybody who positions themselves to destroy our families is our enemy. I don't care mm -hmm. what you say. If you right. position yourself in any way and say, oh, the only way I can help you is if you remove your husband, then you're not helping me. But no, no thanks to your help. If anything that you say to my husband is, I'll help you, but remove your wife, you're not my friend either. 
It doesn't right. matter which, which direction it's coming from. You could be a lawyer, a social worker, a financial, whatever, housing complex. I don't care what you offering me. If the conditions for you offering it to me is the removal of my husband so that mm -hmm. he's not a father to his kids and he's not a husband to me, then I don't want your help. And I'm, I'm okay. And I've said it before. I'll say it again. I would rather start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the thing is that, you know, it, some, we are at a point or have been at a point where we really think that without the help of these people, we might starve. Like, I mean, if, if it comes down to my oppressor feeding me is the only way that I won't starve, but we're going to have to go for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's try it because mm -hmm. I, I, you, I might eat today, but then I have to take your oppression tomorrow. I, I'd rather find another way. And I think that's the um, strength of, of mentality that we have to start to develop in our children and in ourselves to say, you know what, um, oppressor, thank you, but no thank you, or not even thank you, but no thank you, but you know, <laughs> I, I, I won't say the words that I would want to say, right. but you know, we have to just turn away from that and know that we ourselves can uh, have confidence that we can come up with better solutions Absolutely. that will be long lasting and be more fulfilling. So again, we could go on and we will go on about these things um, again at marriedwomensbiz.com. And uh, Noma, I just want to thank you for having this conversation with me. Thank Anything you. Anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Just to uh, encourage everybody to join us at our Married Women's Business platform, and it's at marriedwomensbiz.com. And um, just join the um, Married Women's Biz TV, which is where we're putting all these um, uh, shows that we're putting up at, also at the YouTube channel. And just, um, you know, sign up. The signing up for, is free. And then once you sign up, uh, you have access to all the, the shows that we've been doing so far. So thank you, Shakita. Thanks, guys, for watching.